began weightlifting by a complete accident. I went to a gymnastics gym with a friend because we wanted to learn how to do backflips. Someone opened up a weightlifting gym in there. Gymnastics coach said to me, you're quite strong, you move well, why don't you have a go at it? So I had a go at it and thought, this is pretty cool actually. Once I'd done it for a couple of months, I knew that that was what I wanted to do. This is my childhood bedroom, which I only had a single bed in at the time. So the bed used to be up against that wall. And I used to come here in front of the mirror and practice snatching. Just I used to try and go gentle feet because otherwise I'd get the questions from my parents about what's going on. I mean, I just enjoyed practicing. And I think that's probably why I ended up Jack the Snatch. You could snatch 120 and only clean jerk 130 because my whole time was spent in my bedroom snatching. I had three knee surgeries. I tore the left knee in 2009, and then I tore the cartilage on the right knee in 2014, and then I tore it again in 2016. In 2019, I tore the cartilage on my left knee again, which I'm deciding to try and deal with instead of having the surgery, because it got to the point where they're not really getting better. I had a complete ligament reconstruction of my right elbow with artificial ligaments, because mine was so far gone it couldn't be saved. I had to learn to use my arm all over again. Several minor back surgeries, um, I've had multiple facet joint injections. My training isn't really like other weightlifters because of a lot of injuries that I've had over the years. I work my training so that I've never trained really for more than 12 weeks of hard training at a time, so I've just started that build up now for the world. A lot of time goes into actually just looking after myself. Your warm up gets longer, your rehab, your prehab gets longer, and your training, your real lifting actually ends up getting shorter. I competed in the London Olympics, did well there. I mean, to compete in the Olympics is pretty crazy anyway, but to compete in the home Olympics was just insane. I did well there, I got British records and so on, placed well. I've always obviously wanted a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games, but to go through the multiple surgeries, to actually have gone through all of that and come out with a medal at the Commonwealth Games after everything that I've been through in the build-up, the fact that I didn't just stop weightlifting and say, actually, this is ridiculous, I've had enough. That, I think, is the only time in weightlifting that could have topped how I felt at the Olympic Games because I went through so much to get there. Over the years, really, I've developed a nice kind of pre-lift routine. I do the same thing in training as in competition, and it's become so ingrained that I don't even notice I do it anymore. I walk up to the bar, I check the weight on both ends, I sweep the platform, and then I set myself up. I enjoy it. It's never a chore for me to go to the gym. I always enjoy it. I spent so long doing it that I hate it when I can't get to the gym. It's just become part of my life. I've always been the person that goes way beyond the minimum, not just looking at the lifts, I look at doing all the extra stuff, but if you put the work in, then you should be proud of yourself and you will do well for it. I think I've snatched 146 now, I'm clean jerk 176. I'm a few kilos heavier now, so if on hooks them up to at least 150 snatch and 180 clean and jerk. That 150 snatch and weight thing is a real nice master. spend as much time with my dogs as I can. I have two dogs, they are both rescue dogs, and they're both about seven years old now. They're how I like to have my relaxation time. I like to just spend time with the dogs, watching them play. When I come down to London to train, I always bring the dogs with me, because they can go off to the rugby club and have a right rage around, play in the sprinkler. It's not the same company to people. Having those dogs is somewhat nicer. You get home and a dog is always happy to see you. Watching them play for me is like relaxation time. They're a big part of my life because they are part of my relaxation. Literally live off potatoes apart from for breakfast where I'll eat oats. I don't ever real make, really make real meals. I just make a lot of potatoes and cover them in piri piri salt and then stick any meat with it. Pork chops today, I make sure that I eat enough protein in the day. So I try and get something around two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. So I weigh around 80, I'm like 82, 83 at the minute. So I aim for 160 grams of protein in the day. And other than that, I don't really worry what I eat. I'm a big fan of Haribo. Haribo, potatoes and meat, and that is pretty much my diet. I just put the peri peri salt on it, cover it in that, and it's bound to taste good. I always have to check my own cooking. That looks all right, don't like it's gonna kill me. My goal really is to get to another Olympics before I'm done in weightlifting. 
While I think there's still some life in my body, I will keep weightlifting because that is how I see myself. I see myself as a weightlifter first and then anything else comes second. And I've got a few years left in me and I've definitely got to do a 150 snatch before I can call it a day. I want to set the record somewhere that people look at them and they think that is going to take a long time to beat. So I want to kind of leave a legacy of it. I want to leave a legacy of my records, but I also want to leave an impact on the next generation of weightlifters and hopefully give them something that I wish I had done or known when I was their age. It can make a big difference and the earlier you start getting in these good routines, the further you're going to go in weightlifting. I've already tried to step out of it and failed, so um, I don't think you can ever just leave it behind. You'll always still have some involvement in weightlifting.